We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. 30 years after its inception, the James Webb Space Telescope was launched from French Guiana on Christmas Day two years ago. On December 28th, it passed by the moon. On January 24th, it fired its engines for five minutes before entering its final orbit, which was 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. After months of tedious setup, it finally generated its first image on July 12th of last year, showing us distant galaxies for the first time, as they appeared more than 13 billion years ago. Since then, the Webb Telescope has continued to build upon this incredible foundation. It appears that the threshold has been lifted once more, and Webb is ushering in a new era of astronomy and space exploration. Its most recent photographs serve as terrifying proof of both humanity's capacity for discovery and its complete insignificance. Join us as we explore the new image captured by the James Webb Telescope that reveals the secrets of the universe. In actuality, telescopes are not physically peering back in time when they observe the light from distant galaxies. No one is able to directly gaze at the past because it no longer exists. Instead, the telescopes are observing a beam of light's current pattern. The beam of light has been essentially undisturbed for millions of years as it moves through the mostly empty vacuum of space. As a result, the pattern of this light beam at the present time is the same as the pattern it had when it was first produced by the far-off galaxy millions of years ago. We can therefore guess about the galaxy's appearance millions of years ago by observing a beam of light in its current state. It's comparable to printing out a baby photo of your daughter and then looking at it 10 years later. You are metaphorically looking back in time when you look at the printed photo to see what your daughter looked like as a baby. However, you are not actually seeing back in time. Your daughter is not a baby anymore, and she doesn't have a baby self anywhere in the universe. Instead, you are viewing a current lighting pattern that was produced by the printed photograph's inks reflecting the light in the surrounding space. However, the current beam of light emanating from the picture has the same pattern as the beam of light that originated from your baby daughter 10 years ago because the ink in the picture has been specifically organized into a pattern resembling your daughter as a baby, and because the ink pattern has not changed over the past 10 years. Imagine, for example, that some acid spills on the image and a large white dot appears above your daughter's head. When gazing at the image, you would have to assume that your girl was being watched by a UFO or a ball of lightning 10 years ago if you were literally peering back in time. However, you are probably intelligent enough to know that you are not actually looking back in time, but rather at a current light pattern that no longer precisely resembles the pattern of light from when you shot the photo 10 years ago. Similar to this, we can only infer the past from present-day light beams hitting observatories directed at far-off galaxies if the light has not altered through time. A more accurate portrayal of the past would result from the light from distant galaxies changing as it travels. But this change would have to be in ways that humans can comprehend and subtract from. The redshift that results from the universe's expansion is one significant alteration to light as it passes across intergalactic space. Fortunately, since the redshift is now well understood, it is possible to shift the light pattern back by the proper amount to provide an accurate picture of the distant galaxy at the time the light was emitted. From just a few that were previously known to exist in the period, the James Webb Telescope, JWST, has now revealed hundreds of ancient galaxies that might be among the first inhabitants of the universe. According to a recent study, these very young galaxies displayed intricate structures and star formation clusters as early as 600 million years after the Big Bang. The study is a result of international cooperation known as the JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES which collected data over the course of a month from two inconspicuous regions of the sky, one in the vicinity of the Fornax Cluster and another in the constellation Ursa Minor. Over 700 recently discovered young galaxies in this area provide insight into the early universe. If you took the whole universe and shrunk it down to a two-hour movie, you are seeing the first five minutes of the movie. Kevin Hainline, an assistant research professor at the Stewart Observatory in Arizona and a lead author of the new study, said while announcing the discovery, These are the galaxies that are beginning the process of creating the constituent parts and complexity of the modern world. 
The origins of the early galaxies and stars, which gave rise to the diverse range of elements seen in the universe today, are clarified by these recent discoveries. Using Webb's data, Heinlein and his team discovered 717 young galaxies in just those five minutes, which indicates that the universe is between 370 million and 650 million years old. These galaxies are all already thousands of light years across, have intricate structures, and are giving birth to stars in numerous clusters. Previously, the earliest galaxies we could see just looked like little smudges. And yet, those smudges represent millions or even billions of stars at the beginning of the universe. Now, we can see that some of them are actually extended objects with visible structures. Nearly all of the main space telescopes, including Hubble, Chandra X-ray Observatory, and NASA's now-retired Spitzer, have conducted substantial research on the two locations used in this study, collectively referred to as Goods South. 93% of the newly discovered galaxies that Webb discovered during Jades had never been observed previously, despite this prior examination. Only the brightest, most extreme instances of brilliant galaxies from the early cosmos were visible to us before. Now that the cosmos is still young and tumultuous, we are actually drilling down to more common, everyday galaxies. There has been much discussion on how exactly that chaotic, extremely dusty environment became the transparent universe we know today. One popular theory holds that this stage of the universe's evolution, known as the Epoch of Reionization, happened about 400,000 years after the Big Bang, when the first generation of stars, estimated to be 30 to 300 times as massive and millions of times brighter than our Sun, formed and illuminated the previously dark universe. By dividing the cosmos's plentiful hydrogen atoms into protons and electrons, this ultraviolet starlight reionized the universe, a process that continued for one billion years after the Big Bang. Few researchers, however, believe that outflows from supermassive black holes, like the one in the center of our Milky Way, may have caused ultraviolet radiation from galaxies to escape, and as a result, may have had a more significant impact on cosmic development than previously assumed. Now, a second JADES team that has been researching galaxies between 500 and 850 million years after the Big Bang, or between 5 and 8 minutes of the two-hour movie describing the universe, believes it has the solution to the age-old query. In this next scene of the universe, we are starting to actually see the impact of galaxy formation on the composition of the large-scale universe. Galaxies in the very early universe were just far more chaotic in general in how they formed stars. Ryan Ensley, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Texas who led the second study said, in order to understand how starlight ionized the gas within those extremely early galaxies, Ensley's team examined the signals of star formation in those galaxies, a property that atoms ionized by starlight radiate when they have cooled and merged with other molecules. The researchers discovered that one in six galaxies at the time displayed severe line emissions in the galaxy's spectrum. These emission lines show that early galaxies were producing stars actively, which led to torrents of ultraviolet photons being blasted into each galaxy. As a result, the early stars of the cosmos turned into the primary forces for cosmic reionization. Ensley claims that in the very early universe, these strong emission lines are actually very typical. These remarkably strong emission line fingerprints which indicate intense recent star formation, are present in almost every galaxy that we have discovered so far. They were excellent at producing hot, massive stars in these early galaxies. Ensley's team deduced from the same emission lines that galaxies in the early cosmos gave birth to stars in brief bursts and then went dormant periods. A deep field image of hundreds of galaxies, many of which were seen as they were in the early cosmos, was the first image the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, sent back in July 2022. Many folks weren't prepared for some of these galaxies to appear to be curiously deformed and twisted. It is an illusion in the Webb photos. These Salvador Dali-like galaxies that resemble melted candy are not how these objects appear in space. A further surprising feature of the web photos is the appearance of many galaxies in the same image, as shown in the image of the huge galaxy cluster RX J2129. Once more, this is a delusion. These galaxies do not actually have identical twins. 
How is that even possible? The same gravitational lensing mechanism is what causes these two separate web image features. Albert Einstein's original prediction of gravitational lensing, which functions as a magnifying glass for astronomers, was made more than 100 years ago. They are all examples of gravitationally lensed objects, which are warped in repeating galaxies. Einstein's theory of general relativity, which contends that mass-having objects have an impact on the fabric of space and time, which are combined to form a single entity known as space-time, predicts the phenomena of gravitational lensing. Imagine a stretched rubber sheet that has been covered in balls of varying densities. The rubber sheet is more severely warped by a ball with a larger mass. The same is true for massive things that are embedded in space-time. The more massive an object is, the more space-time it warps, with galaxies and galaxy clusters being particularly extreme examples. When light from a background object, such as a star or galaxy, traverses this warp, the effect becomes extremely fascinating. Except when the space it is passing through is distorted, light moves in straight lines. Light from a distant source bends because of the way mass warps space. As a result, the background object appears to be in a different part of the sky when the light reaches Earth. Extreme warping occurs when there is a large object between Earth and the background source, causing light to travel along various routes that are all warped to varied degrees. This modifies the light's arrival time and, to variable degrees, the length of the journey it travels before reaching us. It follows that a lensed object may appear at many locations during a single exposure. This can result in some intriguing patterns, such as crosses, or in the case of lensing with perfect symmetry, a light ring known as an Einstein ring, which are all composed of repeated instances of the same thing. According to the European Space Agency, galaxy clusters are not ideal intermediate or lensing objects because of their messy form and absence of a concentrated distribution of mass. As seen in the web deep field view, this results in the background lensed object appearing warped as arcs around the lensing galaxy cluster. But these lensing artifacts are more than just fascinating objects to look at. Astronomers can benefit from gravitational lensing in a variety of ways. In addition to distorting background light, gravitational lensing has the ability to magnify background light, enhancing feeble light from extremely far-off objects like early galaxies. Gravitational lensing is therefore essential to Webb's study of the early universe. Additionally, lensing objects can reveal a lot about themselves through the patterns they produce when light flows through them, according to NASA. For instance, gravitational lensing can show the distribution of mass in galaxies and galactic clusters. In addition, the super-hot gas giant exoplanet that rounds its star in less than one Earth day has evidence of water vapor in its atmosphere, according to the James Webb Space Telescope. The exoplanet, WASP-18b, is a gas giant ten times more massive than Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. The planet's orbital distance of just 3.1 million kilometers around the sun-like star, WASP-18, which is around 400 light-years from Earth, is rather extreme. Mercury, the innermost planet in the solar system, orbits the Sun at a distance of 63.4 million kilometers for comparison. This exoplanet is so near to its parent star that its atmosphere reaches temperatures where most water molecules disintegrate, according to a statement from NASA. The telescope's observing abilities are demonstrated by Webb's ability to resolve the leftover water's signals. Even while the surface of the planet reaches temperatures of about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the spectrum of its atmosphere plainly reveals a number of minor but accurately measured water features. Given its extreme heat, most water molecules would be torn to pieces. Therefore, the fact that it is still present is a testament to Webb's amazing sensitivity. Other telescopes, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, NASA's X-ray Space Telescope Chandra, the exoplanet Hunter Tess, and the now-retired Infrared Spitzer Space Telescope have explored the exoplanet, which was identified in 2008. However, none of these satellite observatories had the sensitivity to detect the signs of water in the planet's atmosphere. Due to their subtlety, the water features in this spectrum were challenging to spot in earlier observations. The web observations allowed us to finally observe water features, which was incredibly exciting. WASP-18b is tidally locked in addition to being extremely big, hot, and near to its parent star. 
that indicates that one side of the planet always faces the star, much as the near side of the moon always faces Earth. There are large temperature changes on the planet's surface as a result of this tidal locking. For the first time, the web measurements allowed researchers to map these variations in great depth. According to the data, the planet's brightest regions can be up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than those in the twilight zone. The scientists now believe that there may be some undiscovered mechanism at work that hinders the diffusion of heat over the planet's globe because they didn't anticipate such huge temperature disparities. The lack of east-west winds indicated by the WASP-18b brightness map is best reproduced by models with atmospheric drag. The existence of a powerful magnetic field on this planet as one explanation would be a fascinating discovery. The Webb Telescope is providing us the sensitivity to map hot giant planets like WASP-18b in greater detail than ever before. It's quite exciting to find that some of the things our models anticipated, like a rapid drop in temperature away from the point on the planet directly facing the star, are actually observed in the data because this is the first time a planet has been surveyed with Webb. On the other hand, we are rewriting the history of the formation and evolution of galaxies in the first moments following the Big Bang. Webb and gravitational lensing's magnifying ability together represent a revolution. In a world 40 light years from Earth, where every day can be a windy beach purgatory, the adage, a bad day at the beach is better than a good day at the office, would not apply. On exoplanet VHS 1256b, sand particles that are hot and abrasive whirl in the clouds. Visitors might get a terrific exfoliating facial from the weather, but it wouldn't be at all soothing. Temperatures soar to a blistering 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit up in the clouds. It's a relentless, scorching sandstorm. Additionally, rainstorms likely pelt the planet with the sandy mixture when the clouds become too dense, according to scientists. Smaller silicate granules that make up its atmosphere resemble smoke more than anything else. More than anything else, the bigger particles may resemble hot, minuscule sand grains. Meanwhile, James Webb Telescope observations reveal a place with considerably more extreme conditions and some parallels to Earth. For instance, they found that the atmosphere of the planet clearly showed the presence of chemicals that are abundant on our planet, such as water, methane, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. Our days and their days are only separated by two hours. However, it takes 10,000 years for one of its two stars to complete one full orbit. It was compared to Tatooine-like by a NASA Twitter account, alluding to Luke Skywalker's house in Star Wars, which featured twin sunsets. Their light wouldn't shine so brightly given how far away the planet is from its home stars, about four times farther than Pluto is from the Sun. Some light wavelengths or hues are absorbed by molecules in the environment. Astronomers can determine what light segments are missing to determine the molecular composition of the atmosphere by dividing the light into its parts, creating a rainbow. Exoplanet spectra, which are used to examine the atmospheres of other planets outside our solar system, are one of Webb's main goals. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.